Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we're continuing on with a special tools investigation. We're going to look at two tools today, the broken beam tool and the secondary beam break tool. I'm just going to scroll over here to later on in this file and zoom in a bunch. And we are going to go to the uh, special tools palette, and we're looking at the sixth tool here, which is the broken beam tool. Now, this is a very simple tool. It serves one purpose. Uh, if you click in any measure, um, you will only get handles on uh, notes that have a broken beam. And broken beams are these little guys here where you have a dotted eighth and a sixteenth uh, beam right there. That's a, that's a broken beam. If I were to go over here where there's no broken beams, or even over here, you'll see you won't even get any handles. So you'll only get handles on these broken beams. And uh, these handles here, Basically, uh, they're just toggles. You can't right-click them. There's no deleting to clear the position, etc. Um, they're simply toggles. And the way that these works is that um, when they are unchecked, basically these the direction of this broken beam, in other words, the left and right direction, is in its default state. So, um, which is kind of important, sort of weirdly, if if these rhythms get changed. But uh, checking the left one will freeze the state of the broken beam to the left, which doesn't change it in this case. But selecting the right one will change it so that the broken beam now goes off to the right. And actually now it interferes with that note. Um, we can do it over here. You can see that this one will now go off to the left. So it is strange, but it is possible in Finale to actually get these broken beams to go in the quote-unquote wrong direction. And you can do it uh, on notes like this. See, that goes left. There is left. Or we can force that one right, etc. Now, there is one scenario where uh, this is kind of important in Finale. For some reason, Finale doesn't handle the broken beams in this particular rhythm correctly. When you have a triplet with a dotted eighth, sixteenth eighth, um, Finale puts the broken beam to the right, which is kind of wrong. I don't think it's technically wrong, but it's definitely it's definitely wrong. Um, this beam should go to the left. This broken beam should go to the left. So this is how we have to correct this. And believe me, I've looked through all of the beaming options, all of the stem options. There's nothing nothing anywhere in Finale. Uh, the tuplets options, I've checked everywhere in here. There's nothing in Finale that will um, make Finale uh, notate this correctly with the broken beam to the left in a tuplet like this. So unfortunately, the only way to fix this is to uh, use this broken beam tool and flip that to the left side. It, it happens on this situation too, where you have eighth, sixteenth, dotted eighth. Um, it sends the broken beam to the left when it really should send it to the right. So uh, in this case, you actually have to, to, to do that one as well. So this kind of becomes a huge pain when you have a lot of them. If you have a lot of these rhythms going on in your file, you can kind of tell how much of a pain it would be to have to continuously do that. There is fortunately a uh, plugin that handles this. If you have the JW plugins, um, this will handle this in, uh, in short order. So I'm just going to go to JW change. And the thing that we're looking for is in the beam stubs category. That's what uh, JW change considers these little broken beams. They call them beam stubs. And literally there's only two options here. There's reset to defaults and there's direction. So you can choose the direction option here and say, you know what, all of these have to go to the left and hit apply. And you'll see that they'll all flip to the left correct side in this particular tri triplet situation. Now there may be scenarios, I've talked about this JW plugin before, um, there may be scenarios where you have a large selection with these types of rhythms, but you also have you know, other types of dotted 16th or dotted 8th and 16th notes, and so you only want to change the ones in tuplets. There are some filters here, there's stuff that you can do, you know, here in this uh, section here, you could say in tuplets, so that you're only changing the, the beam stubs that appear in tuplets. So just by checking that, you would um, you would not change the, the beam stubs everywhere else. So, um, you know, this JW change plugin is is really the best way to deal with this scenario if you have to. And then the, the reset will just do that. It will reset it back to normal, <laughs> quote unquote, the way that Finale would, would normally um, uh, draw these beam stubs. And that's really all there is to it. You know, the interesting thing about this tool, and I started to talk about how, how these things can get frozen left or right. So let's take this last one in this measure, and I'm just going to select the top one, which means that now this beam stub is frozen left, which doesn't matter because it would appear left naturally. Um, what's interesting is that you, if you actually go ahead and delete the notes ahead of it and leave that note, and let's say we add another 
uh, eighth note and sixteenth note after the the uh, sounds load, um, you could see that 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 frozen beam stub uh, remains with that note. So uh, it is weird, but um, that that uh, that handle will stay checked um, when you change the notes around. It kind of uh, gets attached to that particular entry. So um, just be aware of the difference between you know freezing it left versus the default direction, which will put it right or left depending on the the context. So. Um, yeah, that's what's going on there. And that's basically the broken beam tool. There really, really is nothing more to it than that. Um, so let's, uh, let's take a look at the other tool we're going to talk about today, which is the secondary beam break tool. And that's over here, about two thirds of the way uh, through the palette. This is called the secondary beam break tool. Now with the secondary beam break tool, what we're adjusting is secondary beams. And it's important to realize that primary beams would be the, the very first beam, so the eighth beam. Um, so if you click on a measure that doesn't have any 16th notes or smaller, you actually won't get any handles because there's no secondary beams in this measure. But if you go into this measure, now you'll see all sorts of handles above every single note, um, everywhere there is a secondary beam somewhere. And with the 32nd notes, those, there's actually two different secondary beams. There's the 16th and the 32nd beam. And the way that this tool works is that, you know, these handles are also, um, you can't right click them. There's no deleting or, or anything like that. The only thing that you can do with these handles is double click them. Uh, let me do this one over here. Uh, to get to this window, or if you uh, press return or enter, it will also bring you to this secondary beam break selection. Say that 10 times fast. And you'll see a bunch of options. There's two options here, break through or break only. Break through is usually what you want to use for the secondary beam breaks, and you can decide um, how far down the rhythmic value you want to break the beam. So um, you can't go to eighth notes because, again, eighth notes are primary beams, so that's why sixteenth note is the first option here. So if you choose sixteenth note, you see that I've just checked sixteenth note and all of the other secondary beams get checked as well, which means that all of these beams will get uh, broken because the breakthrough option is checked. If I were to check 32nd, you'd see just 16th go away, etc. So you're kind of breaking you know, the largest all the way through the smallest in this case. So if we choose 16th here and click OK, you'll see just that. It will break through the 16th, meaning the 16th also gets broken, right? We can go back into that window, and if we say, okay, only break through the 32nd, then you can see that you can have the, the uh, 16th beam up here, but the 32nd note will be broken. Now, I think the correct way to do this is actually to break through the 16th in this particular case, but, uh, you know, obviously Finale will allow you to do it any way that you want, all right? And obviously, if you only have uh, 16ths and 30 seconds and you try to break through the 64th, nothing's going to happen because there are no 64ths. Um, so that's really your options and you get all the way up to 4096th notes. All right, so that's the breakthrough. You can do kind of crazy stuff like this, although I wouldn't recommend it. Break through the 32nd. Here we can break through the 32nd. And I should mention that um, uh, as, you're seeing me, as you're seeing me doing this, you select the handle and the, the beam will break to the left of that handle. So uh, if you select the first one, there won't be any breaking happening. Now, I'm just going to go over to this measure here. You saw the second option there uh, besides break through, which is break only, which is really interesting. And just another thing that's completely flexible in Finale is that you can break only certain beams. So if I wanted to only break the 16th, and this time you'll see that just checking the 16th will not check the rest of them. Um, you can only break the 16th beam and get something like that. So uh, you can also choose more than one if you want to choose the 16th and the 32nd, and you can get something uh, crazy looking like that. So, you know, there is a difference between the break through and the break only. Just be aware of what's happening. And uh, in fact, this is kind of <laughs> this is kind of weird, but, you know, you, you can get some really crazy results like this by using the break only. Um, just going to kind of set up something here that's totally silly. Uh, break only the 64th. Let's go over here. Break only the 16th and the 64th. <laughs> you get something like that. Let's break um, just the 32nd. And you can kind of see how ridiculous you can you can make these um, these particular uh, these particular beam breaks, these secondary beam breaks. Um, it is it is remarkably flexible, um, but. Uh, yeah, you can do pretty much anything you want. Let's see. I'm just trying to set up something crazy looking here. 
just so you can kind of get a cool look at this. Break the 16th and 64th. There we go. So, yeah, I mean, not that you would ever want to do something like this. It kind of looks like a QR code or something. But, um, you know, Finale is flexible enough that you can actually do something like this. Um, you know, it's interesting. I'm, this is something I'm not even sure that, like, you know, Dorico could do this or Sibelius. Um, I'm not an expert in either of those, so I'd be curious to see if anybody would have a way to replicate this in either of those programs. But you know what? In Finale, we can do it for better or worse. Probably for worse, because you really wouldn't ever want to do that. And then, incidentally, to uh, reset everything, you have to do them one at a time. So you go back to this handle here and just press reset, and it basically does break through nothing, and that will go back to normal. Unfortunately, there's no way to like press delete to get these to reset. You actually have to go in here, press reset, and you have to do them one at a time, which is kind of a pain. Um, it's just how how it works. All right, so that is the secondary beam break tool. There is a plugin in the, uh, the the TG Tools Pro set under the music section here called Beam Breaker, and this will do some similar things to what I've been doing uh, with the secondary beam section. Um, you can also break primary beams and deal with rests and everything. Uh, it's a little bit too much to cover in this video, so. I think I will save this for a dedicated video at some point. I'll do a, a special video on the, the TG Tools Beam Breaker plugin. Uh, it does have some uses. There's some funky stuff going on with it, but uh, I think um, for certain things this is this could be very useful, uh, particularly with just very simple, you know, breaking at the eighth note, you know, halfway through a 30-second run or something like that. So, anyway, so that's what's going on. Um, yeah, and that's it. That is the uh, beam stubs and, or, sorry, the broken beam tool and the secondary beam break tool in the special tools. Um, come back for the next video. I think I'm going to try and cover three uh, special tools in the next one. The beam extension, secondary beam angle, and the beam width tool. Uh, they're kind of easy tools to, to deal with, so I think I can get that all in one video, and that will wrap up the beam tools uh, in the special tools. All right. So once again, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, as always, please, please, please subscribe and I will see you soon on the next video.